Hey there, welcome to the Midweek Message. I hope everybody is doing well. Let me open up our time with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for another beautiful day in our lives. We thank you for your presence uh, to help us each day as we go through all the ups and downs in life. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, help us today with the message that I share to put into practice. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. Again, it's great to be with you all. Um, I wanted to begin and share a quote with you from a devotion book that I use quite regularly. And it's uh, called The Promise Effect. It's by Bruce Main. He works for, uh, he's the founder and works for an organization we support called Urban Promise. Uh, it's a mission organization that works uh, with children from all over the world. Um, they do incredible things. And he uh, gave me this devotion book years ago and I ended up getting a bunch of copies and I give it to students sometimes. But uh, there's a great quote by a, uh, in one of his devotions by a man named Fred Smith, who is um, a leadership guy. He's spoken at conferences um, and educational kind of conferences. And he said this, and it's about our need to uh, continually to move and climb in life. He said this, something in human nature tempts us to stay where we're comfortable. We try to find a plateau, a resting place, where we have comfortable stress and adequate finances where we have comfortable associations with people without the intimidation of meeting new people and entering strange situations. Of course, all of us need to plateau for a time. We climb and then plateau for assimilation. But once we've assimilated what we've learned, we climb again. It's unfortunate when we've done our last climb. When we've made our last climb, we are old, whether 40 or 80. We as believers are called to climb. Doesn't matter what our age is, we are called to be young in Christ. When we are in Christ, we live lives of movement. We live lives of action. We don't live lives that are just constrained to the walls of church or maybe our own private faith. We are called to live that message out. You know, when you look at organizations that fail, if you've ever read any leadership books and they have case studies on why this company or this company didn't make it, one of the common denominators is they didn't modify or they didn't change. They may have an incredible product, but they failed to get their message out to the people that they were trying to get to buy the product or to know about the product. You know, as a church, so oftentimes we do the same thing. We have the best product in the world. We have this thing we call faith in Christ or relationship with Jesus Christ. We are bearers of this good news but we're called to share this, to get this message out to the world. And when we don't do that, when we try to stay comfortable, when we don't climb anymore, when we don't live this out in the world, our message becomes stagnant. Our witness becomes non-existent. We're called to live out this faith and always be to find new ways to bring this great message to the world. You see, our message does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as the writer of Hebrews says. We are called with this timeless message we have to get that message out to the world. Jesus modeled this ministry of movement that we're all called to. When he was meeting with his disciples in what we call the Great Commission in, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, he said this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The early church was called to go and make disciples of all nations. It was a commission that was much bigger than any of them. They couldn't do this on their own and they realized that. But Jesus also promised them that he was sending them another. He was sending them the Holy Spirit so that they would not be alone. They would be walking with God they would be doing ministry with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And sure enough, as we read through Acts, the, uh, these early believers, these, uh, these apostles and others who had seen the resurrected Christ were filled with the Spirit. They brought many people to Christ and more and more people were living lives surrendered to God. People were living lives where they were filled with the Spirit. And as they were filled with the Spirit, they moved with the Spirit. You see, all of us who are believers, we have this thing that makes us uncomfortable when we're not doing anything with our faith. 
See, God gives us this gift, as I've mentioned several times already, of the Holy Spirit. And this helps us to live lives of movement. People noticed uh, the difference in these uh, apostles. They weren't like uh, other people. It says in Acts 4.13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. And if you look at Peter's life in particular, he was somebody toward the end of Jesus' life, he deserted him. He was the exact op opposite of courage. He was a coward. He ran away when Jesus was going through his darkest hour, and yet he was reinstated and he was commissioned to be the one, uh, along with the other disciples, who would build the church. They were filled with a power that was greater with, than them, their faith in Christ, the filling of the Holy Spirit, they were able to bring many people to the Lord. And from that initial movement through the last 2,000 years, there have been more and more people who've surrendered their life to Christ. Thousands upon thousands upon millions of people that have said yes to Jesus, all because these early believers lived a life of movement. You and I are called to live the same life of movement to not live our life constrained to the walls of a church, but to go to church, to be filled, and then to live out our faith in the world. Let's do that this week through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you that we are part of something that is greater than us because that helps us to surrender our lives daily to you. Fill us fresh again with your Holy Spirit and help us to live out the Great Commission every day. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. Take care, y'all. It was great to be with you.